This is only an Alan the Lifeboat episode by a few fraying strands of thread, but today's test is due to a big project I have coming up for my expedition boat. So, we'll immediately cut to somewhere else, where the interior lighting confused my camera and software so much, I've had to go all arty for this opening section. Rather unusually, you are joining me today from home, and we're going to be looking at some resins, some carbon fibre and some glass fibre. In making our composite sandwich, let's start with the fabric. This is a mixture of glass fibre and carbon fibre. The carbon runs lengthways, with some angled across too so it's not fragile at the perpendicular. Glass fibre then runs at plus and minus 45 degrees to create a cross pattern. They alternate, so it's not glass fibre sandwiched between carbon or vice versa. The weight of the glass is greater at 200 GSM per layer, but that doesn't mean that there's twice as much glass fibre, as carbon is only about 60% of the density of glass. This provides the weight saving that advanced composites like carbon, Kevlar and so on have over glass fibre laminates. You can see the glass on one side and the carbon on the other face, plus a few polyester strands to hold the 615 GSM tape together. It's not a tight woven cloth like a twill, so this helps it stop disintegrating. Now this is an unusual fabric tape. Usually people pick either cheaper glass when weight isn't a big deal, or carbon when it is, and when you need a bit more stiffness or strength. But it's an interesting hybrid combination for this episode, since we're not testing the tape, but instead the two main resins on offer. I'm making the two laminates. Half of each sheet is going to be a single layer, so 615 GSM, and I'm doubling up the other half to 1230 GSM, which is getting closer to a laminate that might manage in a structural application. People familiar with boat maintenance and other composites projects will be familiar with the two main choices. Polyester resin on the left. This is the cheapest, although they aren't all born equal, and I choose quality resins from two companies in the UK. Polyester is a single part, and you've just set off the chemical curing reaction by adding a few percent of MEKP catalyst. On the right is an epoxy two-part laminating resin, two to three times the price per litre. It's similar to epoxy adhesives you may have used at home like Araldite or JB Weld, but it's much, much thinner so that you can pour, brush or infuse it. Both are essentially plastics, and they are used to hold the fabrics, which give us the mechanical properties of a composite, into a solid matrix. I'm going to gloss over the actual laminating, but briefly, you mix up your two part, or your one part and add the necessary drops of catalyst, and then in the most simple method shown here, brush it into your fabric. Care must be shown with technique, as you need enough resin to fully wet out the fabric of course, but possibly some extra too on the two outer faces, so you can form a flat surface finish. But you don't want too much, as it will merely add weight without adding strength. Prepregs, vacuums and infusion will give you the best ratio of resin to fabric, but I'm flying the flag for good old wet lay here. I actually often use infusion epoxy resin for wet lay, as I find the thinner resin faster to brush and roller in when trying to wet out many layers of fabric. You can generally control the amount of working time you have with each pot of resin, but epoxy generally offers more time if you pick some of the slower reacting hardeners. For non-cosmetic parts like this test, a cheap method of covering for the cure is to use silicon baking paper. It's easy to lay, perhaps easier than peel ply or other plastic films, and you can visually expel any large air bubbles before placing the board on top and some weight to compress. My two test pieces cured overnight. Before testing though, the overspill of resin has a use here. I can show you the consistency of cured resin. The polyester is rather brittle, and lacking fabric within tends to snap very sharply. Its elongation to break is around 2%, which, by the way, is similar to carbon fibre. The epoxy does also snap, but feels more flexible, and sometimes needs more flexes to fracture, with two or three times the polyester resin's elongation to break. So similar to, or a little more than glass fibre, but less stretchy than fabrics like Dialin or Inegra. Right, time for some colour. So we're off to my Vanguard unit today and that's where we're going to be testing the combination of carbon fibre and glass fibre and then of course the two sorts of resins, epoxy and polyester, to see how they behave differently, if they do at all. The reason for my change of location and the initial use of my home then. Polyester resins contain styrene, which stinks to high heaven, and this is why I use my home where I can close off a curing area instead of causing a riot at the next location we're moving to now, at Vanguard in Westminster. As well as being where I store my most important equipment and clothing, the team there are admirable in how tolerant they are of me doing silly things there, like testing how snappy my composites are. Being underground, it's warm and dry there even in the autumn and winter months. 
before getting going on the main test, seeing how the two resins interact with the carbon and glass fibres, and how the resulting laminates fail, plus of course how easily, more resin snapping. What fun. You can see that the polyester is more brittle, but the epoxy isn't what I call waxy, although you can now buy a specialist super flexible epoxy. These are the test pieces, and the labels are there to stop total chaos and a meltdown of confusion, not because I like using my label machine. My key question is this, is the accepted notion that epoxy is a wasted expense when used with cheap glass fibre, and conversely that polyester resin is useless with the quote-unquote more advanced carbon fibre true, or merely composite snobbery? Must you match the expensive fabric with expensive resin, and vice versa? We'll start with the cheaper polyester resin, and my test isn't a quantitative analysis, nor is it a point impact test. Instead, I want to see how they behave in a simple bend and snap. The single layer first, and we can fold it back on itself fairly tightly before I hear any strands of fibre snapping. If you think about it, for two pretty stiff fibre types and a supposedly brittle resin, this is impressive. The polyester is not prematurely snapping or flaking off the fabric, which means one accusation that polyester doesn't wet out carbon very well is not borne out here. I'm snapping each half of each laminate twice, and the results are that the impressively resilient composite fails only when really pressed into a fracture line, but they aren't snapping in half, and we'll see why later. Then the double thickness half. The performance is more or less what I expected. It's stiffer, of course, but can still be folded back on itself, and fails in the same sort of way, just with more effort needed. I've bent them in both the different directions, so we can compare the upper side being a carbon layer and the underside a glass layer. Let's move on to the epoxy laminate, and of course back to the thinner single 615 GSM thickness. Epoxy fans would expect the laminate to be stiffer, stronger, and harder to snap. I actually checked laminate deflections with weights, and both resins gave the same stiffness at least with these thin sheets, so I didn't bother filming it. This first bend didn't really want to fail at first, it springs back to nearly flat, which indicates that some fibres are snapping inside, but not enough to cause a line fracture. I tried at the second position, and really tried to snap it with a tight radius, and lo and behold it complied. These resins clearly aren't identical then, but I have to admit it felt pretty similar in the second attempt to when I was snapping the polyester samples. Definitely not night and day. Onto the thicker double layer epoxy laminated sheet, we have something of a repeat performance. Remember here that on the first snap, we have the glass fibres on the outer of the fold, and on the second snap attempt, the carbon is on the outer of the fold. This didn't happen with the polyester, where they all failed fully, so the resins are interacting with the fibres differently, and the relative higher stretch of the glass is proving the difference. Here I'm showing you some of the extra examples of how the laminates behave when being bent, snapped, and resolutely forced to fail. Composites are inherently a marriage of different components. The recipe matters. Your resins and fabrics will all stretch, resist bending, and so on in different ways. And when they combine, you get a new behaviour, not just an average of the two. When you have a hybrid of fabrics as you do here, it's inevitable that although some fibres might load up and enhance the performance of another, they will generally start snapping in a predictable order. It's also a myth that carbon fibre is a wonder product that due to reputation and cost, and by the way it's actually much cheaper than some other fabrics, is dramatically stronger and stiffer than the boring, old, pauper's choice that is glass fibre. It's nonsense. In fact, many glass fibres perform to within 10 or 20% of the strength of mid-level carbons. But, it's much denser, so even when resin is taken into account, comparable laminates can be a third lighter. Carbon is always comparatively more brittle, but as we've seen, it can also be remarkably flexible before pinging back into shape unharmed, especially with unidirectional fibres. You'll be noticing here that unlike the epoxy, where eventual failure with lots of flexing back and forth gives a straight line snap, the polyester behaves rather differently. There are strands and mini strands of fabric that don't want to snap neatly. They are ripping off and really being quite obtuse. Now, this is probably down to the extent of which the resin is or isn't really infiltrating the fabric and glooping into and around all the millions of fibres. We can see here that on the broken edge I can manipulate the fibres, the glass is softer and wiggly, and the carbon is sharper and more snappy. Here are my takeaways. Laminates that need to flex moderately or dramatically in their rolls will benefit from epoxy resin. Likewise, those taking big point impacts, but that's another story. However, if weight saving is a consideration that lures you away from a traditional glass fiber and polyester resin composite, and your part is going to flex either not at all or minimally, then using carbon fiber either on its own or in a hybrid with polyester resin is a real money saver, not an act of idiocy. Just make sure you use a modern quality resin.
The stiffnesses are similar enough between the resins that with a proper measurement device, I suspect we'd find low single digit percentage differences between the two. Was this what you expected? Let me know. Or just get angry because you love epoxy. Either is fine. Bye.